Hey guys. So I'll be going through how I usually edit my multi-track drums in Kickwalk by Bandlab. First, let me show you some hotkeys and settings that I've got set up. This will really help to increase the efficiency and the whole process makes it way easier. So first thing is we're going to be changing the selection of the clip right after the split to the right portion. So you can find this under the editing tab here. So it defaults to the left portion, but we're going to change it to the right. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to change the colors of the grid. So you can search for lines. And the main one we're going to change are the vertical beat lines and the vertical measure lines. So vertical measure lines are the ones of each bar, while the vertical beat lines are the ones in between, mainly the one ends. So for shortcuts, I've got some set up as well. The main one that I usually use is this uh, crossfade. So enable and disable automatic crossfades. I've got it set up to the button right beside one. The next shortcut is fade selected clips. So I've got this set up to alternate F. Okay, as for my view right here, I like to set the grids to be in front of clips. This can get a little bit messy, so you can choose to off it if you start to feel that it's like messing with your eyes and stuff. Yeah, but during editing, you can call this up to make it right in front of the clips. So you can see where the drum transition should land. And this helps with editing really a lot. Okay, so the first editing method I'm going to show you is manual slip editing. This is just a manual method of moving the drum transitions to the point on the grid. To begin with, we can probably start by grouping all these mics. So you right click and select create selection group from selected clips. So with that, your clips will be automatically highlighted when you select the top part of the clip. This is to maintain the face coherency. So you don't want to be moving different mics away from other mics. And you can move all of them together at once. So to begin, the shortcut for that is alternate shift. So select the clip you want, hold down alternate and shift, and you can drag the clip back and forth. I usually like to have my set off here so I can move it to where exactly I want it to be. So what you do when you edit the drums is to make a split by holding out alternate look out for the scissor logo and make a cut right before each transient. Then you move the transient on its right to where the grid lines are. As you can see, if you have the left portion selected, you have to manually select the right. But since we have it set to select the right portion automatically, we don't have to do that and it saves a lot of time. You can see we can just go through it very quickly and move all the clips into place. But one thing to note that is once you begin editing a project, you might notice that it's still fairly quick and so now I can uh, display all the images pretty well. But once you get to the later end of the track, it gets pretty laggy. So this method can really take a toll if you're going to be splitting every clip and every transient. Yeah, but this is the most efficient way to doing manual slip editing. The only thing is that it takes a lot of time and it hurts your hands after a while. So I'm going to be showing you another efficient way of doing slip editing, but with the help of Audio Snap, let me just undo all of this. Okay, so to, we are back to where we started. Okay, so this method involves the use of Audio Snap. You can call out the Audio Snap palette by its shortcut alternate A. It will also automatically appear when you enter the Audio Snap view of the clips. So to do that, just select the clips you want, center mouse click, and go to Audio Transients. But before you click this, just hold down control, and this will enable all the selected clips to enter the view that you want. So once in the Audio Transient view, you can adjust the threshold as you like, and this will create transient markers. It will detect the transient and try to place markers where it thinks there is a proper drum transient. But as you can see, it's not that effective. There are some mistakes here and there, but you have to manually edit it to the right place. So what we're going to do is we're going to be mainly moving all the main close mics. So all the drum shells, kick, snare, toms into place. Let's start by, big, by inserting a new track. And we're going to be selecting which, which drums that we want to be moved into place. Wait, let me remove this group clips first. Okay, so we're going to be moving the kick. Uh, so just select the clip, hold Control shift and move it to the new track. So you want to use the kick, snare, top, 
and all the toms. For this case, we're going to be moving the, the right as well. So we're going to move that to the new track. So in this track, you can see we have all these different mics and different transients at different points. So we're going to just bounce, bounce this down to one single file. Just right click, just highlight and bounce to clip. So now we're left with the combination of all the tracks in one single clip. Next, we're going to enable the audio snap for this clip. And we're going to be position our transient markers at the right places. It's going to go through quickly and move the ones that seem really off. You can usually leave a bit of tolerance for the markers. We're going to move the ones that look really off only, like this one. You can choose to be really precise by selecting a uniform start point for each of the marker. But for this case of this tutorial, we can just clean it up quickly. Oh yeah, so for the hotkey, in order to disable or enable the transient marker, you can highlight it and press Ctrl Alternate D. For example, if you have a hit right here and it doesn't generate a marker for you there, you can hold Alternate and click at the point. So the next step is we're going to add this clip to pull and apply all these transient markers to the rest of all the drum mics. Oh wait, right before that, we want to be offsetting this single track to the left so we can move the transient markers away from the drum transient. So later when we split our clips, we don't have the crossfades right on the transient. So to do this, you can hold down N and it's shortcut to enable and disable the snap. So if you hold down N, it allows you to temporarily create a additional snap setting. So we're going to be using ticks. We can set this around 30 ticks and make sure the setting is snap by value because we're going to be shifting our clips back by 30 ticks. So in order to do that, just hold down N. Just right click this and click away and it will remain here for a while. Okay, so we're going to be moving this clip back by 30 30 ticks right there, like this. Next, we're going to apply this transfer marker to the rest of the mics. As you can see, now our transfer markers are 30 ticks away from our drum transient. Now the next step is to split the clips into We're going to split the clips into different bits. Exit the exit to the clip view and we're going to press delete. And this will delete the initial extra stuff that's in front. Seems like this one didn't get trimmed. We're going to do for this again. Okay. So here is how it sounds before quantizing. Okay, so the timing is not that far off, but you can hear some of the notes are a bit draggy and some of it's a bit rushed. So once we got each transient in its own individual clip, we can quantize all of this to the grid. So we're gonna choose, we're gonna highlight all of this clip and press Q. So this will be on the quantize prompt. And we're gonna make sure that it's audio clip start time. And we're going to put an offset, which is negative of the value that you have used earlier. As for the crossfade, we're going to use probably like 5 milliseconds. You can play around with this value and find the most optimal one for your projects. And the resolution, we're going to use the lowest resolution 
the smallest resolution of each sheet. So for this case, it's probably 16. As you can see now, the clips will start to fall into place. As you can tell, the crossways are away from the transient while the drum transient still remain on the grid. You can play through this and see how it sounds. Yep, sounds okay. So as you can see, this is a fairly quick method to edit really simple drums. Especially if you don't have any fancy patterns or like triplets that falls all over the place. You can even do the whole track in one shot with this method. But I'll suggest splitting the track into different clips, different sections like choruses, verse, and do it part by part. So after you've done one section, you can proceed to remove this clip from pool by deselecting this. You can even delete this clip after that. And you can proceed to the next section and repeat the same process all over again. Yep, so that's all. Hope you learned something new. And if you have any tips for me to apply in my own editing process, just let me know in the comments. And thanks.